This isn't my normal introduction into a video, but we'll do something a little bit different in this one. In the video today, we're going to be taking a look at Unify's latest update. This is 6.4.54. They released this update about a week, 10 days ago. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a quick look at a side by side comparison on what the two differences look like. Just before we jump in though, if you are new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you find this video useful or enjoyed it, hit the like and share button too. Just before we start digging in side by side, I'm going to quickly show you the updates. So these are just the overview. So there's a notification rework, uh, real time updates from the gateway, improved system performance and improved application latency. All of these, which we would always welcome. In terms of improvements, they then go down to list them a little bit further in detail. There's quite a few in here. Um, given the last version, I think there are quite a few improvements that are needed to be made, especially in the user interface. I find myself using the old interface rather than the newer one. I know the new one isn't still in beta, but I found myself going back due to the number of bugs in the latest version. So we have two UDM pros that we're connected to. The one on this side is the 6.2.26 and the one on this side is the 6.4.54. One thing I will say is before you go ahead and upgrade, be sure to take a backup and you upgrade at your own risk. If you want to know how to do the upgrade, you just go to settings, click on the updates tab on here, and then you'll see here that you have an update button just here. If I do the same on the other side, you'll probably see the same sort of thing. So if I go to updates, you'll see here that I have the option to do the updates here. Uh, if you haven't upgraded to 1.10, uh, you're going to need to make sure you do that too. So this is actually running 1.93 as well, um, which is a slightly older version. Back to the side by side comparison. Uh, here is the network on both of them. So we'll let them load. So I've had a little play around with this before it actually loaded and I'm finding it is a little bit quicker in terms of getting to the individual settings. Uh, we're no longer waiting for that circle to load up the application and it seems to be responding a little bit quicker. Here we have the main dashboard. There isn't too much different on this. So I'm going to move past this and skip this a little bit. Let's go ahead and click on topology. This is the first thing. You can see they both loaded fairly quickly. I've always found the topology is a bit hit and miss in terms of the loading. Uh, the one thing I did notice though with a slight change on here is when you go to display options. The layout in here has changed a little bit in terms of um, you can see from side to side. So it shows the clients 2.4, 5 gigahertz and wired, whereas the wired and wireless are split over here. And then you can go into the description and the status. So it doesn't really show you all these options on the previous version, but it does on the new one. And then we go into Unify Devices. This is a prime example, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, it seems to be a little bit lagging in terms of loading on the older interface. I don't know if anybody's found that issue before. I mean, drop me down, drop me a comment down in the section below if you feel that you've not had this issue and it's just me. But let me know what's happened to you anyway. The differences with this one as well are in the top. So you've got the filter and the display options. We have something that was called elements, which is now devices. And we have status down here. So online, offline. So everything that you see down here, the status. So slightly laid out a little bit different in terms of how it looks and feels. And there's also another column here or another tab, should I say, which is column, which now shows you all the col column visibility stuff down here. So whereas previously it was down at the bottom, just on a little, it's now on a separate tab. So you can just tick and untick these, have a look at the memory usage, the firmware, and you can remove stuff that you don't need as well. So it's all the same, but it just looks and feels a little bit different. Let's move on to devices. Again, we're waiting for the loading, so we'll wait for this to load. And same again, the display options are a little bit different. Whereas previously up here, you'd have the status, uh, there seems to be a show all devices tab which just highlights everything and that basically pulls down a little tab down here which says for showing all the devices do you want to see stuff that's been seen in the last 24 hours a week month all time i'm just going to move out the way there is a little filter section just here on the previous version where you could choose uh, a certain vlan that you have set up which i can't actually see on this side so i don't know if i'm missing it but on this side, you have another option where you can choose the access point. Um, so if I want to look at a specific access point and what's connected to it, 
I can see that from here as well. Column visibility on this side, so you can pick and choose what you wanna look at. Again, it's separated on a different tab. Then we take a look at traffic statistics. Just give this a second to load. That's finally loaded. I don't think there's anything too much different in the traffic statistics um, from what I can see, what I've played around with so far. Then we move across into insights. So insights, there's the new chart that they've mentioned on the webpage that I showed you earlier. Uh, this shows you uh, the Wi-Fi interference and what it is around you so you can make that informed decision in terms of what spectrum you want to use. Uh, this shows both 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz and it shows everything around. So in the older version they don't have that and then you have the Wi-Fi man speed tests. Um, this just was called Wi-Fi man before now, it's called Wi-Fi man speed tests. Threat management. I had a little look over here, there isn't really anything different that's updated updated in this part. Alerts, nothing too much different in alerts, you've just got category, event detail, date and time, whereas it was name, event and date and time. I'm sure that's just down to the display options, so if we have a look at the filters, alert types, what category it is, unified devices, yeah so they've added an extra category system to show you what the error might be. Now we're moving into the settings. So straight off the bat, you can see there's some uh, network version just here, whereas this has controller version. You've got Wi-Fi networks. Security has now disappeared in terms of where it used to be. And system settings and advanced settings, you've got system and advanced features. Where, where I said security disappeared, you've now got traffic and security. And uh, notifications, this was the bit that they said that has been added in. If we go ahead and have a look setting by setting to see if there's any major differences. So if we go to add a new network, let's have a quick look down here. I don't think there'll be too much different in terms of networks. There's optimized IoT Wi-Fi connectivity. So this improves the connection and reliability of the IoT devices. It'd be interesting to see an IoT device connected to one network and not the other and see if there is any uh, improvement. Other than that, there doesn't really seem to be too much more different don't really have anything different on the security side of things and you've got the Wi-Fi scheduler at the bottom. So that is adding a Wi-Fi network so not too much different there. Let's now go across to networks. Let's just pick out a network quickly that we can connect to. In terms of adding a network, uh, if we click add on both of these, I think there may be a few visual changes. Uh, you've got virtual private network, VPN settings. So if we open those up, yeah, you can see there's a site to site here and none and then you've got advanced here which then gives you the options for site to site you've got the manual ipsec as you have previously and you've got open vpn option as well so setting up your vpn may be a little bit more different than it was previously so maybe there's a video coming on setting up the new site to site vpn as well if you want to see that let me know down in the comments below content filtering i don't think there's too much let's just turn that off we don't need that anymore content filtering I don't think there's anything different there. And finally, we have advanced. Again, don't think there's too much different on this from what I can see. So let's move to internet. So right here, it says at the top, add internet connection, and it's updated to say add secondary internet connection. This will give you all the settings you can have set up on here. Maybe a quick little bug here. So I'm clicking cancel. It's not doing anything. I have to go to the X at the top, and then I can stay or I can leave. Unify if you're listening, that could be a little bug that you might need to fix in this. Let's go to system settings on this side and click on system this side. Not too much different here other than the controller configuration has disappeared. So let's have a look at what we normally have in here. Remote logging and uplink connectivity monitor. So they have disappeared from here. I'm guessing they've probably moved into the application. Yeah, so you've got remote logging and uplink connectivity, which has now moved into the application settings. Uh, you've got SSH device authentication, uh, you've got the SSH settings here and you've got the mail server too and your NTP settings which you can set on here. Then we go to advanced features, we have the switch ports, network isolation, bandwidth and radius which we have on here as well. I don't think anything has changed on here. There isn't anything that's changed in terms of the advanced, advanced feature settings so let's go to traffic and security now and this is where you would have security previously in, a, in the older version. 
Right off the bat, you can see there's two options at the start. So device identification. So if you want the Dream Machine to identify the devices, you can allow it here and you can allow it to analyze the network traffic too, which you would want it to do that, which for me, I want it to do that. You then have internet threat management and this is global threat management. I don't think there's too much different in here. The one thing I did notice was create a new group of restrictions. So you can actually create grouped restrictions. I think this was in a, I think this might have been in threat management previously, but now been moved to here as well. So you can click on create a new group. You can allow or block both incoming and outgoing. So if you only wanted outgoing traffic to a said country, you can pick it and then allow it basically. So you can select as many countries as you need and you can add the restriction if you wish to do so. So that can be done right there. On the previous version, you have threat management, network scanners, firewall and advanced. This just seems to be firewall and advanced features. So I'm gonna make the assumption that the threats and advanced options have been gone in, have gone into here. And I would be right with that because you can have the threat management allow list, signature suppression and network scanners, and you have your customizable threat management. So that's it on the security side. And finally, we have the notifications. So on the previous version, that was actually hidden under alerts. So whereas they've reworked it, what they mean is they've just, they've made it a little bit more accessible. So same as you have your alert preferences, you have off, auto or manual, and you have default custom. So what auto used to do is just do them automatically. And if you went manual, you could see all the options here listed. So same again with default, which actually just gives you a quick highlight message now. So previously it didn't yeah previously it didn't but now you have only critical messages so it tell you updates availabilities and completions device disconnections etc and it will send it to the mobile device that's allowed for push notifications so if we now go to manual you can see there's probably a few additional ones there's probably a few additional ones that have been added in here but there's also some new ones too I'm not going to go through each of them individually but you can see that Yes, this did exist before, but they've now just made it a little bit more accessible. So they have other as well, which is what they have for advanced notifications, which you can show on the alerts page, push notifications again, and you can also receive emails on them as well. They are the main differences in the two Unify network settings. Let me know down in the comments below if you have upgraded already. I am seeing the system being a bit more responsive in terms of clicking and you're not waiting for it to constantly load, which is really good, which is always what you want to see when you're using a user interface. Let me know if you've had any issues also as well or what you came across. I haven't really seen much in terms of issues so far in terms of the ones that I've upgraded, but let me know if you have down in the comments below. I hope you found this video useful. This is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.